Hello, this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on the coefficient of determination, also called the R squared, that you oftentimes see associated with a linear regression analysis. So I'd like to explain the coefficient of determination, and partly I want to do that by comparing it to two other metrics that we often see associated with a simple linear regression analysis. That is, first, the standard error of the estimate, and second, the correlation. So I'll come back to these boxes at the end, and we'll start with the scatter plot that I generated with actual data where I am trying to regress Google's monthly stock price returns. So Google here is the dependent variable on the y-axis. It depends on the independent variable on the x-axis, which in this case are Yahoo's stock price returns. So in both cases I have monthly price returns for Google and Yahoo. I'm trying to regress Google as the dependent against Yahoo as the independent. The actual dots are actual observations. The red line is the regression line that is created for me with Excel. It's a, it's a straight line, so it really only requires two parameters to describe it, a slope and a y-intercept. So Excel will generate that for me, and this line, you may recall, is generated by the ordinary least squared method. It attempts to minimize the summation of the squared differences between each of these actual observations and the line. In this case, the linear regression line given to me is y is equal to, so this is going to be a points on these lines, these predicted y's are equal to the slope multiplied by x, the independent variable, plus the y-intercept. I also get this metric that you oftentimes see associated with a linear regression, the r squared. In this case, I get 32, a little bit above 32 percent. And so typically, some would say this is a modest kind of relationship. I think that's pretty good. But let's compare it to, first of all, the standard error of the estimate. I've done a previous tutorial on this. The standard error of the estimate is also a kind of measure of the fit, and it's really a measure of these dispersion from these points to the line and it is the square root of this term in here and actually this whole formula is very much like a standard deviation calculation. What we have in the numerator are the summation of these squared errors or residual terms. So that should sound a lot like that ordinary least squared method. Each of this, this e or epsilon is the error and in this case the error is the difference between the actual y and the line so as you square that and sum all of these then you have the numerator in this function here such that the standard error of the estimate is the square root of the sum of squared errors divided by n minus 2 take the square root of that to get the difference to get the standard error of the estimate. So see the subtle difference there? Standard error of the estimate is a function of the sum of squared errors or sum of squared residuals. But the point is that the standard error of the estimate is a measure of the standard deviation of, these, of the vertical distance between these actual observations and the line. So if you think about that difference here as a, as a standard deviation, it's a measure of the dispersion, and therefore this standard error of the estimate is a measure of the accuracy, how precise is our regression line. The more dispersed these observations are from the line, the less precise, we might say accurate, the line is. The tighter these are, the less the dispersion, and the lower the standard error of the estimate. And we also can say that the sum of squared regression plus the sum of squared error equals the sum of squared total. And I won't go into the detail on that here except to say that the sum of squared regression is the distance between the predicted the line, the regression line, the predicted y, and the average y's, which I have not shown, that would be a horizontal line, if we sum those difference, if we square those differences and sum those, we'll get the sum of squared regression. And then we can add that to the sum of squared errors. Again, that's the 
this distance between observation and line squared and then summed and in total they get we get the sum of squared total so the smaller the sum of squared errors is then the less dispersed these observations are and the tighter the dots are to the line such that we could say the r squared is equal to the sum of squared regression divided by the sum of squared total and so that is the actual mathematical notation but what we really mean is that the r squared is this fraction it's the explained variation divided by the total variation so the r squared or again coefficient of determination is the amount is the is the fraction or proportion of variation in the y axis here the y variable or the dependent variable that is explained by the independent variable and it's also it's not called r squared by accident it is the square of that correlation coefficient so if we come back to a summary here and I'll move this like this then what we have are the standard error of the estimate it that refers to the uncertainty of the predicted y it's the standard deviation of the residual or error term and we know it's a function of the the sum of squared errors then we have the correlation which is a covariance which has been standardized you may recall we standardize by taking the covariance and dividing by the product of the two volatilities by standardize I mean the correlation is converted into a unitless measure from negative one to one and so here's that formula covariance divided by the product of the standard deviations that's the correlation if we square the correlation we get the r squared or the coefficient of determination which is the variance the variation in the dependent variable explained by the independent variable and it's equal to the sum of squared residuals or we could also call that the explained variation divided by the total variation finally just to put some numbers on this here's the actual data that I've plotted I took I've collapsed a lot of the rows in between so just to show you the beginning the recent data as of January 08 and then the more distant data as a uh, that goes back to February 05 so here are the periodic returns here's Yahoo the dependent variable here's Google periodic returns the independent variable here's the Excel function for the intercept so I just get to produce that automatically with a function here's the Excel function for the slope here's that standard error of the estimate that we've been talking about it's equals steyx and it takes it takes uh, two ranges or arrays first the first the known y's and then the known x's so in this case I get that point zero eight so that's the smaller number my standard deviation of errors so to speak is about eight percent then I've got this correlation coefficient and remember that's just the R takes the same parameters and is given by equals C O R R E L short for correlation and finally the R squared R equals R S Q and just to prove that I could go here and take the correlation and square it and I'd get the same number here the 32 percent is the R squared so this R squared is the square of the correlation coefficient so again here's the R here's the R squared this is the coefficient of determination this says to me that under the way that I've set it up 32 percent of the variation in Yahoo's periodic returns can be explained by the variation in Google's return of course in this case I'm just illustrating I think that's actually what we would call a spurious correlation I don't think it's a fair setup but I'm just trying to illustrate okay thanks very much this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle